Well, my children, I'll have to be honest and tell you that my time with Sid was short but sweet. Thank you, God, for letting me meet Sid Vicious. <coughs> Sid Vicious, the hero of punk rock, the hero of my life, the... When I found out that Sid was playing at Max's, was going to play at Max's in September 1978, I was so excited I nearly shit myself. I'm not kidding about that, neither. I was so friggin' excited. I was a college student at the time. I was uh, 20 years old, it's the same as Sid, and um, damn, I couldn't wait. I loved photography, although I did not own a camera, but because I was a college student, I was able to borrow cameras from the AV lab. And that, I borrowed the camera to shoot Sid and, it, and I got a Nikon. And I was so friggin' happy I got the Nikon because every time I used this camera in particular, I got really good results. And I mean, I was driving to New York City to see Sid Vicious after like the dream of my life to get Sid on film. And uh, I wanted the best camera and I just lucked out and got the best camera. So, chance would have it, we drove to New York, bought tickets, got in line, went inside. At Max's, it's by level, the, the, the stage is upstairs, downstairs is a bar and stuff. <laughs> so we walked in and uh, Thin Lizzy was there hanging out so we're chatting with Thin Lizzy who were playing somewhere in New York City that night I do believe they were there hippies with the long hair don't forget this was 1978 and punk rock was new and people were terrified of us punk rock us punk rock Nazis devil worshippers people were terrified of us and no more so than Sid Vicious. Oh, the Satan of the world, right? This is Sid Vicious. There were two shows on three nights, and this was the middle night. The opening band were the victims. I really wished I had seen Pure Hell, but I, they were also from Philadelphia. I couldn't go all three nights. I could only go one night, so. I wanted to make the best of it. Making the best of it for me as a college student and wanting to get a make a dream come true of getting Sid Vicious on film meant getting a camera and getting film. And I got one roll of 36 exposures. One single roll. <laughs> one single roll of film to shoot Sid. Damn. And I did it and uh I really made those frames count. I, I wasn't one for taking tons of pictures. I would live through my viewfinder and wait for the impulse. And when it was right, bam. And then maybe 40 minutes later, bam, whatever it was to maximize my negatives. And so I had 36 exposures, one strip of six frames. Five of them were fantastic, were the best of the lot. And I actually had someone break into my apartment. Well, they didn't break in. They were just in my apartment and ended up stealing a strip of my Sid Vicious neg negatives right out of the negative holder. You know, the plastic negative holders where you slide your negatives in. And just by luck, I guess, he got the strip that had one or two good ones. Not all of them, and man, whoa, I'm still shaking when I think about it. God damn. <laughs> as a youngster, as a young budding photographer, you know, trying to buy film. Let's go from here. We see some Sid. There's the victims over there, two of the victims. I started taking pictures of them. I said, whoa, I gotta stop. Cause I ain't got film for the victims. We go in the show, see the first set. 
And then we go outside, and in between shows, we hung out with Sid. I, I ran over, got Sid. I went over to him and said, Sid, come smoke a joint with us. And he came and hung, hung out with us the whole time. So we're outside after the first set. And hanging out with Sid, smoking a joint. Nancy, pain in the ass, bad mood, negative vibe, Nancy is there. And she's huffing and puffing because Sid wants us to come back to the Chelsea later on for a little party. And Nancy is not having it. You know, I think she only wanted to have Sid to herself, especially with strangers like us that she didn't know me. And um, so she wasn't having it. So she's huffing and puffing and she storms across, st storms away, and she walks right off the curb into a, a like an attack, a, ta a taxi cab is coming kind of fast. I grabbed Nancy out of the way of the taxi, saved that girl's life. I saved the life of Nancy Spongin. Mistake? Anyway, she left us alone after that and Sid stayed hanging out with us. Like, I don't remember there being tons. I think the people were afraid of him. Even his fans. It's like nobody was coming over to him trying to get his attention. We pretty much had him to ourselves, which was excellent. I believe that he was just a lonely kid that wanted friends. I mean, he, we were the same age, and he really was nice. He was a nice kid. He was a nice person, I think. I mean, he did some bad things, you know, but um, he really, to me, seemed like, you know, he was a, a lonely kid, a lonely kid that wanted friends. And sure enough, I would have been his friend if I lived in New York City. I was two hours away in Philly, and I knew, I knew, I knew for a fact that something was going to happen to him, which is why I was there in New York to photograph him. Right then. Right then, right there, 1978. I knew I better photograph Sid now, or I'm not going to have any chance later on. Sid is going too wild, and um, he's not going to last long. And that's exactly what I did. So, I believe he recognized me because a week or two prior to that, a good friend of mine uh, had money from a car accident insurance thing, took us to New York, and we hung out in this hotel for a week. And, every, and she was a six foot, over six foot tall beauty, with crazy color pink hair, which in, you know, 1978, nah, there wasn't a lot of people with uh, crazy color pink hair. <laughs> there wasn't many at all, and you would get beat up for it. This is the girl, Kathy, that Sid liked. The girl with the pink hair. Yeah, that was the one that he really liked her. So he'd stop. <laughs> so anytime we were there, he'd stop and come over and chat with her. She was a tall beauty. I believe she was a model. Her name was Kathy. So everywhere we went, we ran into Sid. And mostly Sid. I don't remember Nancy being around there. Because I'm like, Sid, Sid. You know, <laughs> I wanted to, him to trade his cock ring belt to me for something. Like I was always pulling on that cock ring belt, trying to get it. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get him to trade me for it. And um, I mean, it's his trademark. Why would he trade me for it? But I really wanted it. And he, I think Kathy would, you know, Kathy would get his attention and uh, he'd be over and we'd be hanging out. So I think it was because of that that he hung out with us at Max's after the uh, intermission or before the second set and we was about to start, we went back upstairs. And this was the funniest part ever because the stairs are skinny and Sid was walking up, Sid was in front of me. So his ass was kind of in my face and so was his belt. I pulled on the belt, and the, one of the cock rings, and Sid spun around, like spun around real fast and did that, did that thing to me. And he was above me, so it was like right in my face and I actually didn't know if he was going to hit me or not. I didn't know if he was seriously angry or not. And, um, oh my God, it's burned in my mind because I really didn't know if I made him mad. As a matter of fact, I didn't. And when we went inside, 
and he's actually performing when he's posing for me in my pictures. Like you can see, he's like right with me, and I was, to tell you the truth, I was standing in the back of the crowd, above their heads, and um, with my Nikon, I didn't know how to use a flash, which is why I didn't take pictures on the street or anywhere, because I only knew how to shoot film, like 400 ASA film that I would push to 1600 ASA, and the stage lights would give me enough light that I didn't need a flash. And that's how I like to take my pictures. And um, Sid was posing right for me. I mean, I mean, posing right, locked in to my lens only across the room. So he knew what he was doing. He was very, he was fantastic. You know, he was fantastic. Like I didn't know him from Adam. And I'd always be joking with everybody. I'm running around. <laughs> all the time and I'm talking to everybody and I'm learning photography which is perfect but a lot of times I don't have a camera at that point because I did not own one years later I bought a camera and it was a Nikon as well which I still have to this day the same camera a Nikon FM is what I took all of these pictures with yeah they're sharp as hell they're beautiful I love the camera I used a Vivitar flash when I learned how to use flash which is with Deborah Harry in a locker room at Glasper State College. That's the first time in my life. And I worked on this underground newspaper called Venue. Okay? And this was the era, 1978, of Quaaludes. They stopped being made and they were running out and people were making bootleg Quaaludes. So anyway, so I was at college that day and I had taken one of those fake quaaludes and they make you like drunk and I drove, I actually drove, I was actually in a car driving and I was, I couldn't even, I had to make a right hand turn to come into my street and I went all the way up on the curb and like I couldn't drive and I'm sitting at the table and my mom says, are you drunk? And then I get a telephone call and it's Venue Magazine back at college, it's a 20 minute drive asking me to come back and develop my Sid Vicious film because Venue wants to run a little blurb about Sid Vicious. Oh my God, I got back in the car. I drove all the way there. I developed my film in the dark room. And when it was dry, I just ripped it. Instead of cutting it with scissors between the sprocket holes, I just ripped it. But it, it just makes me laugh because I did it. I did it really well. Truthfully, I really, I, I can't believe how good Sid, I, Sid was musically. I really liked him. I don't care what anybody says, I really liked him. I don't think he was dumb. I thought he was really good and I, it's a shame that he didn't make it. You know, when he was in jail and his mother flew to New York, I went to meet Sid's mom Beverly in a, in a back booth at Max's. And um, I told her, wow, I, I can't believe you came all the way here, you know, f to be by Sid at this time. And uh, damn, the woman was there when he died as well. So poor Sid, poor Sidney, really liked him. I'm so fantastically glad that I had the commitment and followed through to photograph him because it was something I seriously, seriously wanted to do. I had such the urge to photograph Sid Vicious that I can't even tell you. I, I was so excited that I would have the opportunity in September 1978 to make my dream come true. And I did everything, including buy one roll of film to make it happen. Oh my god, what if I had three rolls of film? Imagine some of the pictures I'd have. Jesus, kids are dumb. And thank you, Sid, for gracing my lens. I used to call, call to him, Sydney. Sydney? Hey, Sydney!